Hi everybody, it's Christina from Pretty Distressed. In today's video, I'm gonna be making over this huge gentleman's chest. It's so big, so I'm gonna be using a sprayer to give it a whole new look. This piece is for my bedroom, so if you wanna see this makeover, just keep watching. I'm kicking it off with this huge gentleman's chest this is a part of our bedroom set and if you've been around here for a long time you might have seen me previously make over the nightstands that go with this as well as our bed and this is the last piece in this set i have put this off for a couple of years because this thing is so big and intimidating but guess what i'm gonna be using a sprayer today and it's gonna go so much faster than doing this by hand and i'm gonna give you tips along the way for people who are beginners with sprayers We've taken really good care of this piece, so it's in great working order. So I'm just gonna give it a clean and get it all prepped for painting. I'm starting with my Dixie Belle White Lightning, which I like to put in a spray bottle like this, and just using a scrubby sponge to remove any dirt, grease. I used to pledge this thing a lot, so the TSP soap is really gonna help break that down. And once I'm done cleaning, I'm gonna grab that clear water and give everything a good rinse to remove that soap residue. I am going to be reusing this hardware today but giving it an update these are recessed hardware holes and i have filled these on the other two pieces and i definitely did not want to do this this time because it is a lot of work filling deep holes like that i just have a few nicks and dings to fill so i'm grabbing some dixie mud letting that dry overnight and then i'm using a surf prep sand pad to sand this down to show you guys how easy that is to do, but I am gonna use my surf prep sander. You guys know you see this in every makeover. It just makes my job go a lot faster. And I'm using one of the foam abrasives so that I can get into these details really well. Since this piece of furniture is really slick, I am gonna give this a scuff sand so that my paint will adhere just a little bit better. And this sander is gonna make that go really fast. And look at these foam abrasives go to work. This is why I love these. They get into all those details you have on furniture. If you don't have a sander, you could definitely do this by hand with that surf prep rad pad. And after I'm done with all my sanding, I'm just taking some water and a clean rag and wiping back all that dust before I get ready to paint. Like I mentioned, I'm going to be spraying today, so I'm setting up my Wagner pop-up tent to protect my garage from any overspray. And my tip number one for beginners when you're spraying, if you can lay your piece flat like this, it's just going to give your paint a little bit of extra help from gravity and have everything level out in case you use too much paint. Since my drawers are flush with the frame, I'm not going to have to remove the drawers or the doors to spray this thing, but I am going to tape up these hinges because I don't want them to get clogged up with paint and I definitely want them to function. I'm gonna be going with Dixie Belle Caviar today. This is their blackest black that they have. To prep this, to put this in my sprayer, I'm just gonna mix it up really well and then I'm gonna run it through a strainer so that I don't have any bits that are gonna clog up my gun. This paint is really thick, so it takes a little while for it to run through the strainer, but once it's done, I water mine down so it'll run through the sprayer more easily and it will give you a smoother finish. For this particular paint, I find that I like to water it down about 20%. So I think this is about 20 ounces of paint and I ended up using four ounces of water. I like to get it to a point where these worm lines disappear. I'm going to be using the detail finish nozzle on my Wagner Flexio 3000 and I'm going to make sure that that intake tube is pointing down because I'm mostly going to be painting in a downward motion today. For this particular paint, I have found that my best spraying for me is to set this at about a five because it is a thicker paint. And then I start with my material flow pretty low, but I end up bumping that up too. And the best thing that I can tell you to do as a beginner is test your paint flow out on a cardboard box like this. You wanna do this every time you pick up your sprayer so that you can adjust your flow and get it just right before you actually take it to your piece of furniture. And when you're spraying side to side like this, you wanna make sure that your nozzle is in the horizontal setting. Here are my best beginner's tips for you. You wanna start off your piece before you pull the trigger and then go a little bit past your piece before you let go. You wanna be about six to eight inches away from your surface and you wanna go slow and steady. If you go too fast, you're not gonna get enough paint on your surface. And if you go too slow, it's really gonna pull up and sag. 
You also want to overlap your spray pattern by 50%. So after I do my first pass, when I come back for the second, I aim the middle of my nozzle for the bottom of my last spray pattern. This detail nozzle is going to give you a really smooth finish. It's meant for small projects like this and to give a fine mist finish. It might look slightly textured as it goes on like an orange peel, but as it dries, it will really level out. Another beginner's tip for you is to keep your wrist locked like this. You don't want to flex it or break your wrist like this. That's going to give you an uneven finish. You want to try to maintain the same level from your piece the entire time that you're painting. Remember to go slow and steady, and this is a great angle to show you again how I'm doing that 50% overlap from my last pass. I'm going to paint the sides in an up and down motion, so I'm going to change my nozzle to point vertical like this. I do have my piece propped up from the ground so it doesn't stick to my drop cloth, but I can't get my hand straight all the way down, so I am breaking my wrist a little bit here, but I'll show you after I finish this entire side, I'm going to do one horizontal pass to make sure that there's enough paint on the bottom. And here's that horizontal pass to make sure I have enough paint on the bottom of my piece. So I let this dry for two hours and it just leveled out beautifully. It looked so buttery smooth, but it did have a few little hiccups here and there, but those are easy to buff out. I just grabbed a super fine surf prep rad pad and I'm just sanding in those areas where I saw little pieces of fuzz or little imperfections fall in my finish. You could definitely sand down the entire coat to get a really super smooth finish, but I thought it looked great. So I'm just fixing those imperfections and then I'm going to wipe back that dust with a black old t-shirt. So the second coat is going on just the way the first one went on. I didn't clean out my sprayer between coats because I did it within a couple of hours. If you were letting your sprayer set overnight, I definitely would clean it out in between coats. Here's that orange peel look I was telling you about, but trust me, this will level out as it dries down. As I mentioned earlier, I'm going to make over this hardware because I did not want to fill in those recessed holes. This is just going to be a lot easier. I already cleaned it when it was on the piece, so I'm just taking a rag and making sure there's no dust or anything on it. And I'm going to put a coat of slick stick primer on here. Since these are metal and really shiny, I'm going to use gilding wax on top of them, but that's not going to stick to this type of finish. I've tried that before and it did not work. So I'm going to put a coat of the slick stick on. Now, after this dries in like like four hours, you need to put a second coat on and let it dry overnight. That's what I'm going to do here. I didn't record that because I thought it would be very boring. So after you do your first coat, wait four hours for it to dry, then do one more coat and let everything dry completely overnight. And by the magic of video, we are fast forwarding to the next day. Everything has dried. The piece is looking really great. I'm taking that old black t-shirt again and wiping back any dust that has collected overnight before I start my top coat. I am going to be spraying my top coat as well. I'm using Dixie Belle Gator Hide, which is water repellent and their most protective top coat. And I'm stirring it really, really well before I run it through the strainer to make sure everything is incorporated evenly so it's going to spray beautifully. And I'm taking just a dab 
dab of that caviar paint and mixing that in there to tint it just a little bit so I don't deal with any haze. This is something that you want to do anytime you're working with a really dark colored paint. Now this top coat is a lot thinner than my paint, even when my paint was watered down. So you want to have your settings between the minimum and three, and you want to have your flow turned all the way down to low. And again, I'm going to practice on that cardboard. The sweet spot for me I found is having it set on three and having my material flow just a little bit off of the lowest setting. I just want to make clear I did not add any water to the gator hide. You're going to spray that straight the way it comes out of the can. And the spraying purposes for a top coat are the same. You just want to make sure that your settings are a little bit lower so it's not pushing out as much product because it's thinner, but you're still going to stop and start off of the piece. You're going to overlap 50%. You're going to try to stay six to eight inches away from the piece. So everything is going to be the same. My last beginner's piece of advice for using a sprayer is don't be hard on yourself. You're probably going to have mess ups. They are fixable. You can always sand back your finish and sand out any imperfections that you have. This is only like my fourth or fifth time spraying and I get a lot more confident every time I do it. I think this Wagner sprayer is a great beginning sprayer. It's really easy to clean and it's really easy to use. So don't be hard on yourself. Don't expect perfection the first time. You're going to get better at spraying each time you pick it up and try it out. I get better each time I try it out and it saves so much time. I wonder every time I use the sprayer why I don't spray more often. Okay, while that first coat is drying, I am now ready to get to my hardware. So these were my choices for my gilding wax. I had copper and gold. I originally thought I was gonna go gold on this piece, but I ended up selecting this copper color because it matches the accents on my fan in my bedroom. And again, this is where that piece is gonna go. So I'll show you all of that at the end at the big reveal. So I'm just taking a little detail brush, getting that copper gilding wax on here and putting it all over the hardware. You could definitely start off with doing a paint first, but I kind of like the effect it's giving having the white underneath. So this is just saving me a step by going right on with the gilding wax and it worked perfectly and these look like brand new hardware now. So I let my top coat dry for about two hours and I'm going back in with that super fine sanding pad and I'm just buffing out any imperfections or little hairs that may have fallen in my finish. So now I'm going to put on my second coat of gator hide and I decided to go in a different direction than I did on the first pass because it was easier to reach across the piece this way and I'm just filling in any gaps that I may have missed on that first coat. You might have seen on Instagram that I was debating about using black wax to seal this piece and I am so glad I used this gator hide instead. It went so fast and it ended up drying really super smooth. I let my second coat dry overnight and then my husband brought the piece into the bedroom in the morning. And so now I'm just gonna put my hardware on. This uh, gilding wax, it dries in four hours and then after 12 hours you can buff it. So I'm just taking a clean cloth, buffing it and getting any excess on before I put them back on the piece. I can't forget about my hinges. I'm just going to remove that tape that was protecting them from the paint and then I'm going to protect the area around there and I'm going to grab the gilding wax and just go straight on here. These were not like the hardware. They're very dull and actually have some type of silver paint on them. So I'm going to be able to use the gilding wax directly over the hinges without putting the primer on them. 
Okay, I am done with the biggest piece that I have ever sprayed and I am loving the drama that this is bringing to my bedroom. This piece just fits in so much better now with all these light toned woods that I have. That espresso finish was really just fighting it before and I love the hardware choice on here. It just coordinates perfectly with this beautiful fan that I have. I had put off making over this piece for so many years because I was just thinking it was going to take forever, you guys, but the sprayer made this go so fast and it is such a smooth, beautiful finish. I mean, it's just modern. It's bringing all the drama and moodiness to my bedroom and I'm here for it. Thanks for being here, you guys, and I will see you next time.